Welcome to episode 4 of Hearthaholics, a Hearthstone podcast. This is our podcast for Blackwing Lair, the fourth lair, I was going to say, the fourth wing in Black Rock Mountain. And joining me to discuss this are my two fine co-hosts, Billy and Andres. I am your host, Brian, and how are you guys doing today? Billy, you can go first because you're uh, younger. You almost did that again. Did what? You did that a couple episodes ago where you introduced us both, and then, said, and then we kind of had to stumble there for a second. So I would imagine, you haven't updated yes. us yet, but I would imagine because you were able to correct that before that mm-hmm. happened, that we have arisen in the Hearthstone podcast. Just right? now, we are getting real-time actually streaming. We just rose up to rank 2.5 of all podcasts, so yeah. 2.5. My nice. improved, my That's on-the-spot improved the hosting to not make us like scramble and who's supposed to speak is just... We're tearing up the charts <laughs> with that. But yes, I was thinking maybe we can do it like Jeopardy or something where you just say how you're all doing and then we can just go for it. Whoever goes for it first kind of. Oh, it's like buzzing it. in. All this, everyone yeah, like just tries buzzing to buzz in. in it. Tries to go first and <laughs> we all just talk. <laughs> just start speaking. Exactly. So, Billy, you're Billy, right, Billy? Yeah, yeah I that think one, I am. I'm not sure. Ref- trying to figure it out. Well, in the meantime, Andres, <laughs> you're Andres, right? I am, Andres. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's perfect. I would actually be really disturbed if you weren't, because so, you would have crossed <laughs> wires somewhere. Your your twin brother would have made it on the show. But yeah, how how have you been doing this past week in Hearthstone? It's been an exciting week, as like all of them have been recently. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely an exciting week. We have more cards, and like uh, some of the newer decks are starting to take shape. Um I did some of the heroics this time. I actually got stuck on one. I could not get through Kermagus, but I guess we'll get to that later. Right. Um, and yeah, I played some of the latter. I've been playing a lot of that new warrior, the the patron warrior. Right. Okay. So my experience with the patron warrior has gone something like this. I look at my starting hand. I think none of these are good to have in a starting hand. They need to like activate a combo or something. So I throw them all out. Then I look at my starting hand and say, this is even worse. And then the game begins. The game begins, and I am paralyzed, thinking I have to save every card in my hand for the combo, and I play nothing, staring at the board very long every turn, and then just saying, well, I guess I'll armor up, and then I lose. So how the heck are you supposed to play this deck? Because I am lost. You know, it's, a, it's a weird deck, because you're right. When you see your starting hand, most of the cards just seem like they suck. <laughs> like, how am I going to get ahead on the board yep. with a bunch of like little I guess little I'll minions. interrage his leper gnome. And yeah, pass. but that that deck is all about synergies between cards. Like you almost never want to play any of the cards in the deck just by itself, unless they're weapons. Right. It actually relies a lot on the weapons, and you you almost use your weapons as your minions. So you have to mulligan for your weapons constantly. Fire war axe and dead spider are super vital, mm-hmm. and um, then even your acolytes and everything else you kind of want to play when you have like. A death spite that's about to um to break, or you have the whirlwind, or you can do your crazy patron combos. It's uh it's a weird deck, and most of the game you're just drawing a lot. You're just drawing cards and drawing and drawing and drawing, cycling through your deck, getting everything that you need, and setting up for that one turn where you just do a huge swing and kind of take over. So basically, the point of the deck is roughly to use grim patrons to like get a full board, correct? That's charging? You can, yeah. Although it doesn't work against all decks, right? Because mm-hmm. some decks that are equipped deal with your patrons. But let's say against Paladin or decks that have small minions, uh, this deck does really well against, uh, even against Sue. Because if you can pull off the green patron combo, uh, they have very little chance of gaining back the board. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also have other ways of killing your opponent, like Gromash, or you have your Frothing Berserkers, which combine with the. Uh, the, the little girl, the commander? Orc. yeah, the Warson commander yes. can become like 
huge like damage in one turn yeah so is it typically going for an otk style or like a keep throwing big threats on the board um that's the cool thing you can you can kind of vary from both okay. and that's the sign of a deck that has a very complex strategy oh yeah when you can adapt it you can either take on the board or you can go for the otk mm -hmm. let's say you have two frothing berserkers in your hand and then you have the Warson Commander, and you have maybe a Death Spide that you have been setting up, and maybe a Whirlwind, and maybe a couple minions on the board, or your opponent has some minions on the board, yeah. and you just play everything, and then Whirlwind a couple of times, those Froth and Berserkers become like 12 twos with haste, or I mean with uh, charge. It reminds me a little bit of oil rogue just in that is like it has these huge bursts it can do but you aren't necessarily spinning the whole game just trying to build it to one specific combo you're still yeah playing you know what time. it reminds me of it actually reminds me of miracle road oh. because the whole game you're just drawing and drawing and drawing and cycling through your deck and then you have these amazing combos at the end that you do take care of your opponent. got it so you are very much fishing for that right combination of cards it's just not necessarily only one way to win it's not like uh, yeah, exactly. I found that it's really effective against uh, Paladin. Like, a lot of the Paladins, mm. uh, especially if they're good, will be so conservative against your deck because if you take over with the Patrons, they are screwed. And the only way to come back is uh, Equality Consecrate, which I've seen a lot of them start bringing back just because of this deck. Yeah, well, Paladins also pump out a lot of little creatures for you to run your Patrons into and, you know, get that board advantage. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's really interesting. Yeah, I again, I, I as I've said, I haven't played much since uh, these cards came out, and I'm horrible with the patron deck right now. But it is a deck that I'm very glad exists, even if I haven't played with it. Yeah, much. it's a definitely welcome deck, just because it gives Warrior a different, uh, different little spin that it has. Yeah, I remember that was like at the top of your wish list before all these cards started yeah, coming out. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Finally, I can play Warrior without getting bored out of my <laughs> It's like, mind. my quest is for Warrior. Okay, I'm not going to be here all night. I can just get a couple <laughs> wins and leave. <laughs> um, if you want to get better at it, or if anyone who's listening to this wants to get better at it, I know Zale and Joe have, have been playing this deck a cool. lot, and they stream a lot, and they're very... Um, educational with their streets. That's great. Yeah, I just need to find a couple... I love finding like a well-written deck guide for something that it just tells me, you know, kind of what I'm looking for, kind of what I want to mulligan for, and kind of just how I want to play it. And that just gets me so far to like start out with a deck is when I can find something yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm sure there will be plenty of guys for this deck coming yeah. up if there's not one already out there. Yeah, I'd be curious to look in that. If I find it, I'll toss it in the show notes or something. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that deck for sure. So, Billy, what's been taking up your time um, since the last release... Well, I've been very um, disconnected from Hearthstone. Mm. I I unfortunately have you not even done this week's heroics because yeah. I am a filthy casual. I have actually done um, something in Hearthstone that you have not. This is a uh, this is news, Billy. <laughs> All right, I'll correct it soon. It will, it will soon be All rectified. Right. Um, I have, however, beaten the uh, beaten the wing on normal. I've played a couple of ranked games with decks I was waiting to try out with Hungry Dragon in it. Okay, and that's been a lot of fun. I've been using someone else's uh, Dragon Paladin list. His name is oh, Mill Origin, mm -hmm. um, who who has made like quite a pretty good deck here. I really like it. I haven't really found a bad matchup for it yet, um, and I'm I, yeah, I really like it. It's on Half Pwn. Uh, look up. Mill Origin for people that are interested in Mill playing Mill Origin, deck. and you said it's a road, rogue deck? No, 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 no. This is a Dragon Paladin deck. The guy's name is Mill Origin. Oh, I see. That's very cool. So, yeah, I, I've been really enjoying playing the Dragon Paladin deck. Interesting. So, like, how is it differing? Is it pretty similar to, like, the mid-range Paladin that existed before with some, you know, dragons in there, or is it, like, a totally different... Um... It kind of plays a lot like the mid-range paladin because awesome. it has like zombie chows mm -hmm. and uh, it runs one muster for battle, um, and it it mainly just focuses on controlling the board with stuff like shielded mini bot until you can get into your turn four where you drop your hungry dragon. And at this point, you've taken over the board so much, and then you know your dragon consort and you do crazy things. I forget. Uh, okay, it's hungry dragon is the one that summons the one cost for the other person. Yeah, and then the, yeah, he's the there's girl. also the is it out yet? I, f I keep losing track of which dragons are coming out. Okay, no, next week is a volcanic dragon. 
The one that comes out depending how yeah, many die. Yeah, the Volcanic yep. Drake. The Volcanic Drake, gotcha. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see him played very much, to oh, be really? honest, unless it's like, no, not, not in Dragon decks, mm. I can see him being played in other Yeah, you're right, decks. you don't really need oh, him. Okay, decks. okay, I agree with that. Yep. Although, um, uh, you don't know, maybe there's like a more aggressive version of Dragons. Maybe, maybe in, uh, in either Paladin or Hunter. Yeah. Because of Master for Battle and uh, Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, but I, I can that, see that. Yeah, it, it could be like a huge, a huge. It could see playing Druid, though. I could see that. Yeah, like a token Druid, too. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Just been playing a bunch of Dragon Paladin. I tried uh, Dragon Rogue, which is the deck I was working on before Blackrock Mountain. Yeah, came I remember out. that. Um, to get that to work. Uh, would require a large time investment from me <laughs> to figure out what works and what exactly. doesn't. And yeah, time time requirements are uh, silly. I'm not interested in doing Exactly. That. You're you're much um, too busy not playing RuneScape to, to put the time into something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I may or may not have been playing RuneScape this week. I've been very distracted. You I haven't apologize. mastered playing RuneScape while playing Hearthstone yet? I'm disappointed in you, Billy. It's very difficult <laughs> because you lose... You, you fail attention at one yeah. of them if you're, if you're trying to play both. All right, so just so, quick aside that I'm really curious about. What do you spend the majority of your time in RuneScape doing? Are you, like, doing professions and moving from one to the other? Or are you, like, trying to focus down on one aspect uh, of that game? As of right now, I recently started playing the old school servers, which means you kind of have to start from scratch, but you get to play the older version oh, that's of the game. Awesome. And they have, like, different, they have, like, different features and stuff like that. But um, I've mainly been leveling slayer and what slayer is they give you different tasks and you gotta go kill the monsters you get reward points for mm. it and you can buy certain pieces of gear depending on your slayer level and stuff like so that you're like a monster bounty hunter yeah i but need yeah. you to give me like a crash course and all that because <laughs> i kind of know what to do in the game but there's so much information and there's so many skills and there's Dude, so many like there's... levels in the skills that like uh... i vaguely recall fishing for like a fishing bit? is a fishing is okay. a thing I uh, I kind of cheated a little bit mm. um, on the old school servers because there's a quest that normally you can't beat until like you're a pretty high level. But as long as you just kind of like skip all the things you need to kill, well, you don't really need to kill them. It just kind of implies that you need to, but you don't really. <laughs> if you just kind of run past them, it gives you a bunch of free XP. <laughs> so I was able to like skyrocket to level 30 attack and strength. In the first 10 minutes so you're basically the playing, bounty so. hunter who just runs oh i think i've heard about this <laughs> it's called the it's called like waterfall city or something <laughs> yeah but it's like way off in the map yeah takes a while to get there but yeah i've been having a lot of fun with that but i've also been trying to fit in hearthstone it's very hard to hit, fit both of those games in because they both require a large time commitment that is true. yeah so. <laughs> I, I feel your pain man as someone who's been playing quite a few games this past week and not that much Hearthstone. Um, it, it can be tough to fit in. The phone version is what saved me uh, actually playing this oh, week. I, oh, I've been so, so sorry, happy with the phone version. Sorry to interrupt version. you, but something that has been really nice while playing uh, the other yeah. game, which I refuse to say the name of because I don't want to bring it up Oh, again. of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, has been the uh, Whales on Whales podcast. Oh. I've, been watch I've been listening to that pretty much all this week whenever i have a chance and it's been really that's enjoyable. awesome i'm glad you're you're enjoying that for for people who don't know that is the podcast for basically the podcast network i run all the people from all the different shows i i work on come together into one podcast and just chat uh about whatever comes up so i'm glad you've been enjoying that have you been like listening yeah. back through like the older episodes yeah there was an episode about uh dark souls yeah like, that there was one are you guys mm -hmm. like one of your friends was was explaining to another one of yes. your friends uh, how to get past a certain mission, and it was an interesting conversation to listen to because obviously he was very experienced in the game, and the other person. Yeah, we were me uh, and yeah, me and Cameron were basically just asking Zach like, "How do you do this? Like, what is this game? We are very lost." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> games are really cool. that a is a very bar, hard game. Like, seriously, everyone should go check that out if 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 you uh, are a listener of the Harpaholics and you haven't seen an episode or listened to an episode. Sorry. Of uh, a whales, a whales. Just definitely go check it out. It's really interesting. Yeah, thank you. Um, even even for me, who's a person who hasn't played a lot of the games they talk about. That's awesome. So. Really, I'm really glad you're enjoying that. Um, I don't know if you've listened to the most recent one, but one Cameron, one of the guys on the podcast, has actually been here visiting us in person, which is why I've been so darn busy. And we recorded one in person with him, <laughs> and 
a segment came up wherein we were, were telling ghost stories, but it was like someone would tell three sentences of the, or sorry, 20 seconds of the story and then pass it on to the next person. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Oh, that's cool. It got cool. so dumb. <laughs> I, I don't want to know because I want to watch it. Just listen to it. It's so stupid. But we <laughs> had the amazing. best time. I can't we had the wait. best time ever. So it has been so fun having Cameron here. But yeah, that is what has been keeping me from playing Hearthstone much, honestly. Uh, just damn it, Cameron. Just playing a ton of games with him and hanging out. But there are times when like Cameron's playing a game or doing something else, and I just want to be in the same room with him and talk, but also play some Hearthstone because I can on my phone. And so I've been doing the heroics on that. And. It's been perfect. The phone version is fantastic. I am so happy with it. It runs super well. It doesn't use up a lot of battery life. Um, it doesn't use up a lot of data when I have to use it on data. Like, just everything they did with the phone version is very impressive to me. Um, yeah, I agree with that. They did an amazing job with that phone version. To the version. point where... Uh, yeah. My only complaint yes. is that when you receive a call, the game disconnects momentarily. Oh, it does. I haven't had that happen yet. I received mostly texts. I had that happen in the middle of like a rank 5 game, and I was so mad. Because <laughs> oh, when I reconnected, painful. I had lost my turn. Ugh. Yeah, that's one reason I've been enjoying doing heroics, because honestly, I have run into a few glitches, but it's not a problem um, when I'm not you know, facing people. Um, yeah, you're right. I was going to say that Like for the adventure mode, yeah. it's fantastic. Probably, yeah, it's no problem with Probably that. the biggest bug I've noticed is when creating decks, it, the game has just crashed on me several times and lost a deck I was in the middle of building. And I'm not sure. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Does not that happen to me? That's yeah, it's weird. happened to me four or five times, and I'm not positive what's causing it. But the whole like... What phone do you have? Uh, 5S, an iPhone 5S. Oh, that's weird. I have a 5S yeah, too. So, that's it. I- I guess I haven't created that many decks. Yeah, and, when uh, doing heroics, I spend a lot of time in the deck creator. Yeah, like, I bet. Hmm, yeah, of course. Let's try this now. Nope, that's totally not going to work. Um, but yeah, we can <laughs> we can start discussing those. I know you wanted to get my thoughts on Chromagus. Uh, oh my Andres, god, you don't understand how first trade I am with Chromagus. That's kind of the worst. So we'll jump in here with the uh, the first one, Razor Gore, the Untamed. He is a pretty awesome name, you have to admit. He's a giant dragon, like, shooting a fireball. Um, so already he just gets style points uh, his power is cost of one mana and it is called the rookery gives all corrupted eggs plus one health then summons one and I believe in the normal mode when those eggs get to four health it's either four or five health they like summon a dragon like a four four or five five um, so you're basically trying to like keep his board in check um, and then on heroic I believe they summon an 8-8. So you like really don't want those eggs to ever get to 4 or 5 health, whichever the trigger is, because that will yeah, give you a giant definitely. Um So that one actually gave me like no trouble whatsoever. I just used my um, priest, my priest that I beat the last, uh, the last wing of Blackrock Spire with that just throws out the... Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so bad at this name every time. It's that 2-8 with taunt. And summons a minion for the enemy when it dies. The Death, the Lord? Death Lord. There you go. That name is so generic. It just always goes over my head. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, I play <laughs> that guy, Divine Spirit him, and I killed this guy first. Uh, I actually ended up not doing it with that guy. I had a zombie chow out, and the, I played the zombie chow on turn one that survived the entire game, and I ended up getting it to like 2020 and killing Razor Gore with it. Oh, nice. Um, Very cool. But yeah, did, did, what, what was your experience with that guy, Andres? I. I yeah, he was he was pretty yeah. simple. I used one that I called Mass Extinction. That's what I named the deck. <laughs> oh, a bunch of like AOE? It, yeah, it was a warlock with just a bunch of AOE. It had like Demon Wrath. Yep. It had um, Hellfire, Shadow Flame. It even had, <laughs> what's the name? Twisting Nether. Oh, that's rad. Yep. Yeah, I had a bunch of those things. And then some healing. And uh, it had um, the Void Walkers and... On and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah, he was um he was really easy. It was like one I think the AoE was a really smart way to go. I probably would have gone that way myself, but I was just doing like my test run. Like I'll do it with an existing deck and like see what I need to build around. Yeah, I mean no props to you. You didn't have to even create a deck. You just first run. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think I, I got a little lucky with some of the draws, but like you said, he's just not one of the tougher ones. Um but fun. Yeah, he wasn't too hard. And then uh, next is one I actually had a ton of trouble on. And that's, oh gosh, I have to pronounce this name now, and it's a dragon. Um, Veilastraz, <laughs> the Corrupt. I think that's actually how you pronounce wow, it. Wow, thank you. Um, this one's really cool. His hero power, or hers? It's a red dragon. I don't know if it's him or her. Um, its power. I think it's a His key. power, we'll go with that, is each player draws two cards. In let Heroic, I believe it is, each player draws three cards and he gains a mana crystal 
Um, yep. So, just for people who are super iffy about stuff like this, he is absolutely definitely a male. I just checked; it says in his oh, awesome. uh, bio here when you go to verse him, it says uh, his name, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce because I'm not as brave as Brian. Is a good dragon, but Nefarian is making him evil. Yeah, that's actually if, something I really liked. Is there is some line like, "See how easily I can enslave one of the good guys." I just I love Nefarian's personality in this <laughs> oh, movie. Yeah. He's so he's so annoying and gloating. It's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really interesting because my first thought, at least, I don't know about you, Andres, is like, "Oh, mill him. I'll just you know he's drawing all his cards. I'll just play a mill deck and beat him." But he plays like every good mill card from every class, and that is really, oh, yeah. really and he hard. Has, uh, clockwork gnomes too, or clockwork giants. Yes, I he's mean. got clockwork giants. He's got gang up. He's got um, naturalize from druid. These are cards that make you draw cards and um, give him more cards in his deck. And it is just like impossible to beat him at his own game. I found. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. It makes me really think. You know. We were talking, I think, a couple episodes back about how much Blizzard, whether they're supporting mill decks or not. This guy is one of those clues to me that, like, they really, they're showing you mill as an archetype with this deck. Yeah, they like that mechanic, and they're using it for their bosses, which is awesome. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. Um, I think that is really cool, because, let's say, like, games like Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. there's not just one way to win the game. There's actually many ways. There's actually cards that, if you meet certain conditions, they win you the game. Oh, I Uh, love those cards. Yeah, there's some really interesting Yeah, which opens the door for, like, a lot of different decks and a lot of different strategies. So I'm all for that kind of stuff. Totally agreed. Um, So I was really stuck on this guy for a long time, because all of my mill strategies weren't working, and most of my Outlast strategies weren't either. I, I eventually, I, I was stepping away from the game and just kind of thinking about it as I went out uh, doing other things. And I was just trying to think, okay, what advantage do I get from his mechanic? Um, it's not the fact that I can mill him because he can just do that better to me. Eventually, I settled upon the idea that the advantage I'm getting is I'm getting a ton of cards. And what if I played something that allowed me to play a ton of my cheap cards and do yep. enough damage to take him down? What I settled on was a Hobgoblin Druid. Um, nice. and I, I've never looked at other online oh, decks for that's this, interesting. but, you know, play a ton of one cost minions, play wisps, play, uh, stuff that basically just lets you throw out a hobgoblin and then innervate out a bunch of creatures and just have a crazy big board Wait a minute. early. You're telling me you got to play with your golden wisp? I did. I played with my golden wisp. it as an actual <laughs> advantage. And it was an advantage. Wow. And I believe I beat him first try with this deck. That's awesome. So, wow. Golden I West. was really happy with that one um, because it, I was losing horribly to him with every other idea I had. And then I had this really specific idea and put it into action and it worked great. Um, Perfect. So, Actually, we had a very similar idea. Oh, really? so I also created a druid deck. Nice. But instead of doing like Hobgoblin, I did like a mech druid uh-huh. deck with Innervates yep. and the mech warper. So I could like warp out a lot of stuff. And then I even put in like target dummies and stuff like that. So that I could, like, fill up the board. Mm-hmm. And I think I was using, like, Power of the Wild. And yeah, I Savage did that, too. Roar. Yeah, Savage Roar won it for me, for sure. I got this huge board and then just Savage Roared it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just put a bunch of little dudes. And he doesn't run, like, any, like, AoE exactly. that can wipe your board or exactly. anything like that. So you can just overload the board and, like, play as many things as you can every yeah, time. Yeah, he was... And then you just keep refilling your hand. <laughs> <laughs> he was a super fun boss, honestly. I had a lot of fun trying to work it out. Uh, and some frustration, of course. Um, but it made me sad that, you know, Hobgoblin Druid's, I think, biggest drawback is, you know, running out of steam and cards. It made me sad that I couldn't just go out and play Hobgoblin Druid because uh, I yeah. start running into, you know, the huge drawbacks of it outside of hey, that but, battle. Hey, but guess what? If Mildex ever become a mm, thing, then it's a good counter. Hobgoblin Druid right there. Nice. I like it. I'm still disheartened. The one time I've tried to play Hobgoblin Druid, like, against other people, both Hobgoblins were at the bottom of my deck, like, in the last five cards or something <laughs> I, I was starting to seriously doubt i'd remember to put them in i'm like shoot did i forget to put hobgoblins in this deck that's, that's kind of an oversight <laughs> but now we come on to the one that you hate chromagus oh my He's, god you don't understand how many times i try this guy but he looks on. like a two-headed drake dragon beast thing um i remember actually a long debate about what this guy actually was apparently he's a dragon or the game thinks he is because he has a dragon type uh but yeah well, what is? But he's well, also supposed what, to be a beast, right? Like in World of Warcraft, he's a beast. I think he is. I have not. I do not remember him from World of Warcraft, but there is some debate about what he is. 
Um, in any case, I think it's a bees dragon, so they just went with dragon. Yeah, exactly. They they haven't yet had split types. Um, like Magic has stuff like human wizard, so it'll be interesting. That'd be cool if they, if they add that sort of yeah, thing. Interesting yeah. if they ever go there. Cards that can can fit into different archetypes. Right, like mechanical yeti can be well, no, not a yeti, but like a mechanical uh, bear or something could be a, a beast and a mech. So. There yeah. you go. Uh, his power is Brood Affliction. It costs zero. At the end of your turn, add a Brood Affliction card to your opponent's hand. And to be clear, that's being added to the player's hand. You're not adding it to Chromagus's. Um, in normal, this isn't too terrible. He adds you a cycle of diff- like five different, I believe, cards. Each of them a different color. Each of them have a different ability. For example, it might heal him at the beginning of each turn, or it might hurt you at the beginning of each of your turns, etc., etc. And you have to spend mana to play these cards out of your hand, so the negative effect stops happening. Um, and that's the general mechanic that Chromagus is built around. In normal, not that difficult to deal with. In heroic... It becomes very difficult because all of these have crazy effects and cost three mana to get out of your hand. Um, yep. In addition to that, he loves to play these two drop two threes that every time you play a spell, they get plus two, plus two. Oh my god, those guys. And they're terrifying. <laughs> this guy I was probably stuck on for like, I don't know, hours. I tried so many different strategies against them. Yeah, I tried a lot of different things. And like, I made it a goal not to net deck. One, because it defeats the purpose of the adventure. Mm-hmm. And then two, because I think it's like good training. It's like good puzzle solving. And it trains your deck building skills to think about the problem at hand and what can you put together from what you have to like defeat I it. I totally agree. But I cannot, I haven't been able to come up with a strategy. So before you tell yes. me how you beat it, because I know you already did, I'm going to tell you how I Go tried for it. it. Maybe you did the same and thing but had can... worse draws. I just want to hear, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But first of all, I tried a mage yep. with the Sorcerer's Apprentices. Yep. To try to like, diminish the cost of the spells and then like uh Thorazen to try to like diminish the cost as well. Mm-hmm. And then I try like duplicates in it and like even like Echo of Mediv to try and get more sorcerer apprentices so I could keep doing it. Yeah. And then I think I tried the flame wakers in there too. Mm-hmm. Uh just take advantage of the spells and I had like worms so that, that every time I play, play the spell they would take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. But it just, like, I never had enough of a board presence, and the sorceress would always get removed by the flame strikes right. or by the little bites, so I could never, like, keep a presence on the board. And there were so games that were so close to just, like, assuming total board control, but then he would, I would be so low in life, and his little card that deals damage to you would just kill me by the end. Right. Yeah. Um. Then I also tried uh, a crazy, like handlock kind of type idea where I use like all of the giants mm-hmm. and he fills up your hand and then you also have uh deals a ton of damage to you I had molten's and mountain giants mm-hmm. so I had like huge dudes I could put out and I was playing the clockwork giants too right because he fills up his hand too a lot yep <clears throat> so I was playing all so those I haven't dudes. played this oh sorry I thought there was a break in Oh, I was almost done. I was just going to say those guys, and then I was playing some discard cards so I could get rid of the oh, that's the smart. curse cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was playing Doom Guards and like the health, uh, Soul Fires, mm-hmm. and what's the other demon? The 4 3, the Dead Mistress, or Succubus. The Succubus, right. yeah. So that once I got my big dudes out, I could just discard all those ha- yep. cards really quick. But uh, again, I couldn't get the board in time before he got killed it. Me. So, Billy, did you want to say something? Uh, I haven't actually versed this guy in Heroic, but I was just looking at some decks online to see like the kind of strategy that people right. were going with, um, because I was interested to be able to add my two cents. To gotcha. This um, and this person is amazing, because uh-huh. he beat it with a deck with Law Walker Chuck. Yeah, that's So a, whenever yep. he casts one of the spells, uh, Chromagus now has it in his hand. I love I that. I unfortunately do not have a Cho. Oh. Um, so I couldn't do no, that. No, it doesn't chat my Cho. Dude. So kind of what I, <laughs> the direction I came at this from is not so much I need to get the, uh, the curses out of my hand. Because other than the curse that damages you, the curses can actually be pretty low impact. Like the one that heals him doesn't matter until the end of the game. Yeah, that one doesn't um, really matter. But the one where he plays all those minions is kind of now, scary, here's the th- or the spell stuff. Exactly, and here's where I realized how to beat this guy. And it's one way I've realized afterwards that people have beaten him, and it's kind of his weakness. So first he plays into your hand the one that reduces the cost of all the spells. Typically he'll then spam out his flame hearts, which let him draw a bunch of cards and gain a bunch of armor and that sort of thing. 
play all that, those out of his hand. In the next turn, you get the card that reduces his minions by three. This is where he doesn't play well. He dumps his hand. Um, pretty much, he will reduce himself to two or three cards and get rid of pretty much his entire hand, filling up his board. So if you have a way on turn five or six to destroy his board, you can pretty much gain control of the game. Um, and that's what I went with. So like, like Doomsayer Nova or something exactly like that? Exactly what I wanted to do, but I don't have Doomsayers or any dust. So that oh. is definitely one route you could go, I think. The way I went was actually your way. I played Molten Giant and then, um, and then uh, Shadow, Shadow Flame. Flame. Um, and it took me maybe two or three tries with that deck with the hand lock, or maybe more than that. But it did eventually work because basically not only were you ruining his board, but you could typically gain your own tempo the same turn by maybe playing a second Molten Giant. Um, or yeah, even, you're right. Yeah. Actually, that was one of the things I was trying to do, but I guess I never got the Molten Giant and the Shadow Flame. Yeah, I had to like mulligan, the same mulligan really hard for that. And basically, what you're just looking to do is the turn that he plays out all the minions, you want to wipe his board and then reclaim control. And it it can work. It can be really tricky, and it, t- it took me a long time to like kind of get to the right position, and there are probably like more tailored decks to it, but it can work, and it's definitely a way to like use his advantage against him, and then you don't have to worry about any of the cost reduction curses because they actually turned out to be a disability for him, and he can use your mana getting rid of the other curses from your hand and playing out your own stuff. So That's a, that's a pretty good strategy. I might try that. Yep, and... So at least I, I, I was kind of like on track. You definitely were. You were getting really close. I think it's just maybe the order in which to play your cards and the, the focus to, to like take them yeah. down. But yeah, I think Handlock works really well because like you said... He's giving you cards, and there are a lot of things in Handlock that take advantage of that. Yep. Um, so finally, have you tried Lord Victor Nefarious on Heroic? I have not, because I was stuck in Chromagus. Gotcha. I won't go into detail then, because I want you to be able to, you know, try try it for yourself and no, see what happens. No, we can, we can talk about it, because um, I should have been able to finish Chromagus and finish it, so we can just talk about <laughs> it. Sure. Get ready for the next week. Gotcha. We'll jump through this real quick then. He's pretty awesome. Um... He, so in Heroic, he decides to turn into his dragon form and give himself, I believe, 30 health and 50 armor, and then also have 10 mana every turn. And so I did net deck this one, because <laughs> I had no idea what to Aww, do. So, after all that talk about how it's a great experience to... I was running out of time. Uh, I was running okay, out of patience. I was like, I beat Cromagus. I beat Velas. I can't talk. I haven't. I haven't beat them at all, <laughs> let alone net deck them. But uh, I know. it was just funny to me hearing you go. Uh, it's a great experience. And it teaches you deck building into a net deck. This one. You know what else is a great experience, Billy? Being a hypocrite. Um, it's a lot of yep. fun, honestly. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm doing the same thing as soon as I get into heroic. The weird fine. thing is Bro. it didn't turn out that much different than I thought or what I was kind of doing early, early on, which is just play mid-range paladin, pretty much, or control paladin. Um, oh, is that what he used? And that's what I used, and that's apparently what a lot of people have used, and you can just beat him by, he does the same thing Chromagus does. When these decks get all of their mana, they are not conservative with the cards. So if you just equal, kind of just wipe controls him. board, then equality consecrate him, you can just gain control of the game at some point. Oh, that, that's what I was going to say, because I beat him a normal like that. Yep. I beat him using one of the cards that you get from Ragnaros that costs very little mana, mm-hmm. and uh, Shadow Flame, and I just wiped his entire board, yeah. and he could never come back from The other that. nice thing is Paladin has a whole bunch of low-impact dumb spells, so he's stealing all these secrets and like playing eye for an eye, because his hero power is to you know take spells from your class. So, oh, I remember uh, him. Oh, I lost to Eye for an Eye against him. <laughs> he, he, the only cards I had on board would have no. killed me, so I couldn't attack at any point uh, until at one point I had to play a zombie chow, uh-huh. and then he killed my zombie chow, so now he's healed mm. up. So now that I can do the damage to him, it's just too late. And, That's man, hilarious. That, so he like kept you that was day. on normal. Yep. But yeah, I found I found mm-hmm. Paladin still worked against him. He, it wasn't like super easy. It took me, you know, six or seven tries with that deck. But if you get the right draw, you can gain the board back, just like against Chromagus, and put things put things right. Uh, but that was a fun one. But oh my gosh, I got so frustrated trying other ideas against that guy. I was just so lost. Yeah, the, I, I so far this wing has probably been the hardest. Oh yeah, easily for me. Almost every, every single one, but the first one gave me a ton of trouble. Um, but they've been so fun. Like they've been really interesting to work around. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, not, I kind of want to try Chromagus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited to see if he can make it through that. I, I, I was really happy with the deck I got for that as well. So, 
It's been an awesome wing, but you know what else has come out of this wing, guys? What? Some awesome cards. Andres is correct. Billy, what is not the correct answer? Um, Damn it. <laughs> you were so close, though. I was setting up for, for like, awesome cards for you to say. <laughs> Because you're the host. Exactly. Well, Andres, Andres is the co-host. He understands his role. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. So we're going to talk about the reward from beating Razor Gore, the warrior class spell. It is a two-cost spell. It is called Revenge. It is a rare rarity. And it reads, deal one damage to all minions. If you have 12 or less health, deal three damage instead. Um, I have not played with this card personally. I mean, uh, what is it? Neither Four. have I, but I want to see. I want to hear Andres's opinion of this card because he's been the one out of all three of us to be playing the Grim Patron Warrior the most, and I'm intrigued mm. because this card um, so doesn't seem that great. Isn't even this in card a, a more like that, expensive so. whirlwind that can kill your patrons, though? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, although I've seen a lot of people hate on this card, and like. <sighs> I don't think it's just a overcosted whirlwind because whirlwind cannot deal three damage, and that three damage can come in handy in a lot of times. Um, I haven't seen this card being played in the Patron Warrior. Uh, I don't know if somebody has been experimenting a lot with this, but I think um, this card can be really interesting because it can fill up some holes that the Warrior has. Right, the Warrior has no way of dealing. Uh, AOE that is more than one, right? There's no way for the warrior. You are, I mean, that brawl, is why, but that's not damage, yeah. That, but not really, mm -hmm. right? That's why people put like Baron Geddon into like Control Warrior, yeah, and stuff like that because they have no way of dealing that kind of thing. Like, for example, like a Hellfire from the Warlock. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it's interesting too because. It works like a whirlwind while you're ahead. Let's say if you have a lot of life and maybe you probably have the board. I mean, it usually follows that if you have the board, you're usually good in life. Um, it's a whirlwind, so it can play well with some of the cards that you normally want synergies with a whirlwind. But if you're behind and maybe you don't have the board and maybe you're against like a paladin that had just mustered uh, for battle and quartermaster... Mm -hmm. This is the sort of thing that could maybe bring you back for just two mana. Or let's say you're facing a patron warrior and they did the combo on you and their board is filled up with patrons. This is a two mana spell that wipes their board. So I don't know. I think it has its uses and it it, it can maybe find itself into a deck as like a utility card against this sort of situation. I think the so name is kind of an interesting clue about what it's for. Um you see revenge, it's the idea of you were just, you know, attacked by something like the Grim Patron combo, and this is your way of kind of getting back into the fight. Um, yeah. Which I find interesting. I don't know if I would run, like, two of those, but maybe, like, run one Whirlwind mm -hmm. and run one of these as a tech card, if you're yeah. seeing, like, a lot of Patron Warrior or, like, a lot of uh, mid-range Paladin. Or I can paladin. see it as a recovery against a, you know, a Zoo lo or, or a even zoo like, Yeah, Zoo. Of. Yeah, if you're playing, like, a Control Warrior, even run into a lot of Zoo, this might be a good tech card. To the, the difficulty is, of course, with Warrior, you know, getting to 12 health with all that armor on might take a while. Um, but True, but I think some of those decks that are rushing you... Um, yeah. The warrior is easy to get behind, and like, for, it's hard to gain back the board as a warrior, aside from brawl mm -hmm. and maybe having a weapon equipped. There's not very many comeback mechanics. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think you're the really like you hit the core of it when it's like it's not that this is a great card to play. It's the idea that warrior doesn't have other options um, right now, and that makes sense. It's filling something they don't have for for another class that has this role filled. I don't think this would be a good way to do it. Um, but I can see the potential yep. for, for where Warrior is now. And the cool thing is that this card is very flexible, right? It works both ways. Mm -hmm. It works as a whirlwind when you're good to go, but it works as a wipe when you're behind. Yeah. So it's I, it, we usually don't see cards like that aside from some of the Druid yeah. cards. So I kind of I, I like it. All right. Well, that's really cool. That's a differing opinion than I normally hear about it. Normally I hear the opinion I said. And mostly I just hear it in my head, which is that it's a worse whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the general consensus. And for the most part, you know what? It might be. Mm -hmm. But whirlwind cannot deal three damage, so that's but my Three two whirlwinds can, but you can't run those either. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Any thoughts on that, Billy? I just, I don't know. I don't know really how to feel about Aven uh, sorry, revenge mm -hmm. uh, at all. I, I'm uh, with you. 
Yeah, I am with you. I, I don't know how to feel about this card. I need to, we'll have to see how <laughs> I, it plays out. I don't off. have negative opinions about way. it. I don't have negative opinions about it. I don't have positive opinions about it. I just don't. I don't have any feelings towards this card at all. Wow, apathy. It's the true opposite of love. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so we're going to move on to our next card. The one you get by defeating the corrupt dragon um, is a three-cost card. It is called Flamewalker, which I probably should have said first. It's three-cost. It is a mage minion, rare rarity, two attack, four health, and it reads, after you cast a spell, deal two damage randomly split among all enemies. Hold on. Is it Flame Waker? Walker? Flame Gosh Waker, darn it. Okay. I made the same mistake actually in writing form when this card first came out. I always uh-huh. read it as Flame Walker. Um, yeah, no, it's super confusing. He's also walking no, I was, on flames. I was asking. <laughs> yeah, true. Picture. That is true. I was asking because I call him the Flame Waker before. I was like, wait, is it Flame Walker? No, you got and it. I get confused. You got it right, Andres. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a confusing name for me. And I've heard other people uh, having some of the same I troubles. think everybody gets confused with that name. Honestly. Indeed. The card isn't so confusing though because I, I think it's really good. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, I uh, I can't wait to play with this card. I actually forgot that this card came out this oh, week. Oh yeah. Uh, or else I might have played a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just completely forgot that this. Ex- I thought this came out next week. Um, to be completely honest, but I I'm very excited to play with this card. Obviously, uh, I'm assuming maybe Andres has played with it or maybe played against it because uh, I think he's played a bit more than me mm-hmm. this week. But uh, I think that this card has potential to open up new ways of playing mage well not re- necessarily new but more recent ways of playing mage mm-hmm. uh for instance the tempo mage that we saw uh the flood mage which rain made uh just uh, i i really like this card. i just love the idea of playing this on turn three and then coining out arcane missiles yes true because yeah, that would be pretty good four <laughs> seven damage randomly split that's crazy even better you play sorcerer's uh sorcerer's apprentice <laughs> on too. No, 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 you oh. coin on turn one, you play Sorcerer's Apprentice, mm-hmm. turn two, you play Sorcerer's Apprentice, and then turn three, you, like, Flame Waker Unstable Portal or something. Mm. Like, there's, there's crazy things you... And obviously, it's going to be a very rare situation that both Sorcerer's Apprentices right. live through those turns, but it's still, like, a crazy... Th- I don't know, it's, it's a really fun card. I like Flame Waker. It has potential to be one yeah. of the better major cards. And it's cards. a nice card. For instance, like, recently... I mean, what have we been seeing from Mage? Like, we've been seeing Suit Spewer. Like, I- I'm excited to see a good Mage. Oh, I thought you meant what have we been like seeing Mage Waker. play? Um, oh, yeah. I was like, wait, they're playing. I, I, I Am I that? missing really? this deck? No, no, no. no. I, meant, uh, I meant cards yes. that have come out recently. I mean, we, we did get cards like Unstable Portal, which is kind of a gimmicky card. I can't really say that, though, because it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> and we saw Snow Chugger, which were both very good cards, but they were very geared towards one archetype. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see Flame Waker because he can be used in a majority of different archetypes. I really yeah, like. it's pretty exciting, and it's also a nice card. Like you said, I think it fits in so many because it doesn't like to ask a lot of you to to put into it. Like it's already a pretty good three drop to play. It's easy to play on curve. It just fits nicely in to pretty much any opening. Um, yeah, anyone that's been playing any of the Dragon decks with. Um, uh, what's that? Uh, Blackwing Technician mm-hmm. knows that a three cost two four isn't even that bad because sometimes you don't get the effect from the technician. Yeah. Um, three cost two four is pretty yep. good, and it's another Naga card. Those are always fun. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, I want the Naga uh, sub yeah, expansion. All about Naga. Cool. Naga synergy. Cards. I could see that happening. Yes. Naga has been pretty big so in the cool. in the world of Warcraft for right? sure. I mean, I feel like I've heard it rumored that they're going to be the next playable race on and off for so long. It's like oh, that would be people so. People are always good. wondering. Is it I would game? actually sign back. Nah, I would actually nah, get God. subscription. Um, again. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like it would have to be and the mysterious so spell cool. gave all Naga legs, um, so you can actually wear armor. <laughs> Uh, but he's they're so yeah, cool. cool what do you think of this card andres um i agree with with billy and what she said um i think it goes really well into that tempo mage um i haven't played much with it aside from trying it in Cormagus. Mm-hmm. um but i did see that some chinese player made a deck um that revolved around it and it was kind of like a tempo spell kind of deck and he took it very top very high in the legend ranks, nice. and then I was I saw Savitz playing a tempo mage that was also using this card, 
and was running like cards like uh, Clockwork Gnome just for the spare part and uh, stuff like that so he could get like Blood little it. spells. He he had um, even uh, Toshley in there. So it was interesting. Now um, I just need this we'll, in the uh, the Infinite Fireball deck. So as you're shooting Infinite Fireballs, you're also dealing two <laughs> damage repeatedly. Oh my god. Because... <laughs> Because that's what you more need damage. in an infinite, As if fireball infinite fireballs. Infinite fireballs were not yeah. enough. <laughs> you, you need more damage. Uh, but yes, I think it's a really exciting card. I think it's going to just be fun staple addition to mage. Um, yeah, the thing about mage is that what is a staple though? Because they have so many decks Fair that you can point. play. You can play mech mage, freeze mage. You can play tempo mage. Uh, you can play that gr- grinder mage or the the mill mage. There's so many. That's a really fair point. Yeah, staple mine have not been the best word for that because it I, it seems like it's an obvious fit for mage, but mage has gone in so many directions apart from just the tempo play spells and minions that you're right. I mean, it may yeah. not make the cut for these more specific decks out there. Which hopefully will be like that for a lot of the classes, right? Mm-hmm. Or all the classes. You can pick many different decks, and that's going to make the ladder much harder to predict. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, more exciting, right? Speaking of hard to predict but exciting, the next card we have is Hungry <laughs> Dragon, a four-cost minion, common rarity, five wow. attack and six health, that reads Battle Cry, summon a random one-cost minion for your opponent. Also, it's a dragon type. Was that scripted? <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, that's that was one of perfect. the best ones that you've done. Like, that fit it really Thank well. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> learning my technique, but I like that one a lot. <laughs> I also like this card a lot. Man, this seems really fun. Hungry Dragon, Dragon is an exciting card. I've been, like I said, I've been playing the Dragon Paladin deck. And Hungry Dragon, like, I don't know. I was kind of scared of playing it in, in Paladin. The main reason why I started off with the Dragon Rogue idea was because Rogue has the easiest time of dealing with a random one drop in the middle of a turn without having to spend any extra mana, for instance, backstab, for instance, a weapon that's already up with deadly poison mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, but I've been playing dra- uh, Hungry Dragon in the in the Paladin Dragon deck, and a lot of the time the one drop is so weak that I just kind of ignore it. Like, there's never really a reason to kill it. A lot of the time, well, sometimes it will be something like a young priestess, so I feel like I do have to deal mm. with it. Often you have that 1-4 oh, weapon up, though. Well, I guess you only run one uh, muster, but you, you know, know you often have a minion was, up that can hit it. I was versing a hunter, and he got zombie chow from Hungry Dragon, mm. and I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yes! Sometimes he can benefit you, that's true. That's awesome. I was like, deal with What's it. What's the worst thing you can get, uh, Flame Imp? I believe. Uh, Flame Imp, I think that like a lot of people kind of undervalue this one, but I think Shield Bear is a pretty big deal. Yeah. I think that's kind I of I mean, annoying. Clockwork Gnome yeah. is annoying because it, it gives them you know, the spare part as well and gives them some advantage in that respect. Yeah. That's a, that's a strong point. Honestly, the, the, even the annoying. Footman can be good because I want to yeah. taunt for yeah. free. Yeah, attack. That's Anything with taunt is, uh, is, is good. Luckily, there's or, no Or uh, Northshire Cleric, if you're against the Priest, can oh. be pretty bad. Can I... I want to point out that Hungry Dragon is a brave decision on their part to make as a card because, uh, at least from, I mentioned this last week, uh, at least as of right now, they've done a really good job at making sure that any neutral one drops they make are really, really, like, they're not insane. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not really good. Um, so they've kind of put themselves in a box with Hungry Dragon because if they want to ever make a. Um, kind of like balance out Hungry Dragon a little bit, they can just start making better one drops. But if you start making better one drops, mm. now you're opening up uh, Zoo to become really strong That's a again. really good point. So it, it's interesting that they're willing to take that risk. And I think that's really brave on their part, and I applaud them for it. Yeah, because that would be the major way to nerf Hungry Dragon Buster. Like, eh, it's a 4-5. It's like, wait, what? That, it's useless. It's funny that you say <laughs> yeah, that, because yeah. I was going to say... I feel Hunger Dragon like encompasses what they wanted dragons to be, right? Mm. Just big and mighty and just these big creatures yeah. that are scary. You put it in the board and they instantly, you know, are a huge threat. To I you. love the risk reward idea of dragon, something like Deathwing, which is you have to pay a price to get something this extreme. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of- but I feel like, yeah, they balance it well because they were like, hey, we can we can just do a forecast 5-6 that's just blatantly overpowered. Mm-hmm. So I think they were pretty creative in the way they solved it just by, well, just give your opponent a 1-1. Yeah. Or, I mean, a one-cost minion and, you know, balance this out. I kind of I kind of wish Hungry Dragon was Death Rattle. Um, mainly not because that would be a better card, because it would be. 
but because I'd be able to have fun with like a hungry dragon feign death mind control tech deck, well, which would be the hilarious. The reason I want it to be death rattle is you realize <laughs> the flavor of that would be you murder the dragon and out pops or whatever the one drop is. <laughs> yeah, it's like whatever he ate comes I do out. just love that flavor of though he's summoning a meal for himself as he comes onto the board. Whenever he summons a leopardome, he must <laughs> just be like, oh shoot. <laughs> It would be like Aww. a reverse shredder where yeah. it just pops for your opponent. Yeah, exactly. That would actually be super interesting. That could be interesting if they work with that mechanic later where it's kind of like a death rattle that gives your opponent a minion. Mm -hmm. also, yeah, if um, they do stuff wait. like that, though, it needs to be a big... Wait uh, a sec. We are, um, what, this exists literally, right? The beast? Oh, uh, well, I guess He's also true. a big card, so it's totally out there. Yeah, it, it needs yeah. to be a big card because the, the, the flavor behind it can be the, the same of, of Hungry mm -hmm. Dragon, which is... Uh, obviously, the the beast or whatever big creature is eating this yeah. thing, and now when you kill the creature, the the thing hasn't digested. Mm. That is the flavor out. of the beast. I just so. wish that card was played now. Yeah. I was gonna say too that uh, Hungry Dragon is an interesting card, also because it puts a minion on your opponent's board, and you have control over that, and you can use that to your advantage. Let's say if you're playing a paladin, a dragon paladin. On turn seven, you could play Hungry Dragon and a mind control tech for like an amazing. That's card. a really good point. I hadn't thought about the uh, the mind control tech because uh, usually people play around the mind control tech, but they usually leave like three minions yeah. on the board, and then you can add the fourth yeah. one, and then if you still like one of their good minions, and on top of that play a five six and a three three. That's that's game you know, Yeah, yeah, that's a very that's nice a really board. Cool point. Um, yeah, so moving on here to the last um, normal, in quotation marks, card from this wing. We've got the one you get from defeating Lord Victor Nefarious. It is a four-cost Shaman card. It is Fire Guard Destroyer, common rarity, three attack, six health, and it reads Battle Cry, gain one to four attack, overload one. I love this This card guy so is much. scary. So, you know, break down the stats. At weakest, he's a 4-6. At best, he's a 7-6 for 4 and, you know, 5 with overload. I mean, even if you get a 4-6 for 4, at his, that's fine. At his weakest, he's as good as a Yeti. And at his strongest, he's better than a Bold of his day. Yeah. And he costs 4. He, uh, this is an amazing card. I haven't played with it, but I have people played this card against me and every time people have played this card against me it feels it feels terrible it feels like a huge threat just hit the board something you have to deal with immediately uh even big game hunter is not that good i know this you, card. it's four or five men and use your big game hunter on it that's bad like it's not what you yeah, want yeah it, exactly. and they have to roll the four for you to be yeah. able to do it what happens when they roll a three and now they're on six and now you got big game hunter mm -hmm. like, what do you yeah do? six six oh my god that is so good like this guy will almost guarantee be a two for one. The only thing that can outright kill it is a fireball. Yeah, or you know, any hard removal, but that's And even if they waste a fireball on it, is you're kinda of fine with that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. This is um you gotta uh, let me know here real quick. Like what shaman is out there right now? Like, is there someone running this? As 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 far as I'm aware, there isn't like anyone notable. Okay running a a shaman deck but i've been messing around with a uh, shaman deck that runs unbanned elementals and and stuff like that it doesn't necessarily rely on overload mm -hmm. but it ha it has a lot of overload synergy in it uh, like i said with the unbanned elementals on turn three and then turn four fire guard destroyer which isn't particularly like amazing but because you know that can be a huge swing because the only reason that's bad is because they can obviously deal with the unbanned elemental mm -hmm. um before that happens but even still, like Unbound Elemental is still like a two, four for three. So like, you're, even if they deal with it, it's not a big deal. Sure. Like, you, you, and then you follow it up with a Fire God Destroyer, and maybe they wasted their only removal on the Unbound Elemental. And I don't know. I've been really enjoying uh, Fire God Destroyer. I think it's one of the best Shaman cards to be released, um, off like since the classics. Yeah, set. yeah, I agree with that. It's just playing good. Um, I've seen some mech shamans going around and Firebat was playing a mech shaman on the final of that dream hack you tournament that just happened. Uh, yes. Awesome. I f this card fits just really well in that deck because that deck is super aggressive, right? It just wants to take on the board super early right. and then they play the the hammer that when the Death Hammer. Rattle, no, not Doom Hammer. The, oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, power Mace. Yeah, Power Mace. So that 
they buff their minions super fast and they gain the board with the mech warper and then on turn four you follow mm-hmm. up with this dude which is a huge threat and then if this guy hits your opponent even for like five or yeah. six and damage, the nice thing is it's oh go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say that deck has a lot of reach and has a lot of burst and can finish up your opponent as long as you have been able to deal some damage to it and this this guy does that yeah and it's really not a crippling overload like even if you played on curve having to play four mana twice is not is not that bad at the shaman like yeah not at all especially not for that deck that uh is has a low curve yeah in general. you could easily play like totem you know some other two drop like it's pretty easy to work yeah with. and he has he has amazing plays too like um i was i just catch the final of that dreamhack tournament between firebat and stanzivska mm-hmm. Um, Sensivska was playing a Handlock, and Firebat played the Shaman, and he played a Whirling Sapomatican Curve, turn two. And then Stansivska had, like, um, Death Coil, or I mean, Mortal Coil, and a, um, how was the 4-5 that can't attack? Or... Oh, uh, Ancient Watcher. Yeah, Ancient Watcher. So he had no response, mm-hmm. and he had to tap. So he tapped like two times in a row, and oh, no. Firebat just happened to have two rock biter weapons in his hand, <laughs> and he tapped himself down to twenty, and he got hit by the Whirl and Sapomatic on one turn twice. So he was down to twenty life, and he tapped again down to eighteen. Past the turn, third turn, Firebat just put two rock biters in the Whirl and Sapomatic, hit twice, and won the game. So right he didn't there. have a chance to play Fire Guard Destroyer. He was just like, "Hey, you're dead." <laughs> yeah, you're pretty much dead. And like, I mean, that deck can do that. You can yeah. do 18 damage on turn three with that that's deck. Insane. That's pretty amazing. That's actually, yeah, that's really cool. I am happy to see a Shaman getting good cards because Shaman was probably the first class I started getting really into in this game early on and playing repeatedly, especially a lot in Arena and so on. So, I mean, we haven't talked about Arena much, but this is going to be amazing in Arena. Like, we talked about this in Constructed Play. This is going to be ludicrous. Oh, absolutely. This card is a like no brainer in arena yeah. you you will take this yeah i'm really excited about it um moving on to the class cards we've got two of those as always the first is the warlock class challenge card and i can't remember what the warlock class challenge actually was for the life of me um it was something about using this card i'm sure it is a warlock spell demon wrath it costs three mana and it is a rare rarity and it reads deal two damage to all non-demon minions uh yeah i have not played this yet you got any thoughts on it andres it's a cool card i think it's designed for like a low curve demon deck um where you have maybe like all those little uh, demon tokens and you can wipe the board i see it against like hunters or like against maybe other sue decks mm-hmm. uh even like against paladin to clear out those little pesky silver hand recruits can work well. I found it an interesting choice to a class that already has pretty great AoE and a lot of it uh, between Shadow Flame and Hellfire and I mean Twisting Nether isn't exactly a great card but like unlike Warrior Warlock isn't exactly hurting for these types of abilities. Yeah although I do feel that Hellfire does not play well with certain types of decks. It's hard like for you'll tempo. Never see, yeah you'll never see like an aggressive low curve Warlock deck running Hellfire, but they might sh- throw in a Shadow Flame because Shadow Flame actually synergizes with a lot of their demons, like Voidwalker. Do you mean Shadow Flame or Demon Wrath? Shadow Flame. Okay. But I, but I, what oh, I was I saying, saying is Demon Wrath kind of replaces um, Hellfire in that type of gotcha. Deck, where you can still have like a low curve uh, board control demon demon. Yeah, I can totally see that. What do you think, Billy? Um. Uh, Demon Wrath is an interesting card. Um, I don't understand why people tried, and I only saw like a couple people do this. Why people were trying like Shadow Flame in Sir makes zero <laughs> sense to me. Um, I've like, tried it before. No I sense. think bec- one reason I did it is because sometimes you also run like you know Abuse Sergeant and Power Overwhelming, so you can have a great turn where you like buff your minion, do damage to face, and then wipe the other board. I think it's like a new, it's like a new zoo. It's not like a zoo zoo, but it's like this mid rangey style of deck that runs like Doctor Boom and runs Malganis, uh, the Void Walkers, and it's not as fast as Zoo because it doesn't have, a, have as many low drops, and it cuts things like. Uh, the Direwolf Alphas, you didn't run them as mm-hmm. much. 
but then you exchange that for like an amazing like mid game with like great swing turns with the void walkers and the shatter flame <clears throat> and uh, I'm not sure sort of you thing. mean void walker because that makes no sense. Do you mean void terror? No, I think he means void no, color. The... Oh, uh, the void too color, many I'm voids. Sorry. Officially, oh. too many voids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, or like something like Ruby and Egg, like power overwhelming the shadow flame. Yeah, yeah, exactly. An abusive sergeant, and you know, I also have to say, Zulok is one of the most confusingly named decks because, like, why is it called? I mean, I I know why it's called Zoo because it's based on that old. Isn't it because magic? Yes, yeah, so it was a magic deck yeah. that ran a bunch of yeah, beasts, yeah. and it had a similar idea of throwing in a bunch of low cost minions. But some of that's just new to Hearthstone. It's like, why the heck are you calling this Zulok? They're like no animals. Yeah, anymore. when I was a new player to Hearthstone, I didn't understand that at all. I'm like, why is this called? It's like Demon Lock Zoo, and Hand Lock just make intuitive sense, but Zoo Lock is just like, Whoa. yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, I think the word doesn't yeah. apply that much anymore. Yeah. Back in the day when it was like the Shield Bears and all these little like dorky dorks in this deck, I think it fitted right. a little and more. In, and but... in Magic, it basically came from the aggro, low cost minion deck, and in Magic, they were all beasts, which is why it was called a Zoo. Yeah. And yeah, and then it, yeah, it got the, adapted. Yeah, you literally play with like monkeys yeah. and like lions and like cats, totally, all these things. Totally. Um, but yeah, I I think the, uh, going back to yeah, Shadow Flame in in Zulok, I can see where it's useful from from that angle, but I also kind of see why it's a right. it's a question mark. For Anyhow, you. point I was trying to make uh, is that Demon Wrath is definitely superior, so I'm happy to see mm-hmm. that. Um, although Warlock is starting to concern me. Uh, even because Warlock has a lot of AoE. In yeah, that. I want to say. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think they have to slow down on the AoE cards um, for for Warlock and maybe give some other classes some AoE. Well, yeah, that um, said, this is going to be terrible AoE in Arena or fairly bad AoE in Arena. Oh well, at least. yeah. Well, not you don't, necessarily, guess. because you still ran, you still ran Hellfire. Uh, that's a good point. Arena. That's a fair so, point. So. Good enough. Good enough. You'll probably get some amount of demons. And on the other hand, in Arena, even the yeah. bad demons you can pick. So, um, it's fair yeah. enough. But yeah, it's it's a little weird to me how much AoE Warlocks are getting at this point. I'm curious how that's going to play. Which, to be fair, is how they are in <laughs> WoW. They have a silly amount of AoE that's in WoW. That's a good point. Um, True. So, I guess it makes sense in Hearthstone as well, but... yep. You know what doesn't make sense is the Dark Iron Skulker. All right, maybe it makes sense, but it is the Rogue Clash Challenge card. It is a uh, five-cost minion, a rare rarity, four attack, and three health, and reads Battle Cry, deal two damage to all undamaged enemy minions. So it basically just backstabs everybody when it hits the board. Yeah, even the animation is really cool when he mm-hmm. comes in. Uh, he, he yeah, it does it in order, it's... too. I thought he would do it like all the same time. He was like, no, you first, yeah, then goes, you, then step, you. Step, That's step, cool. Step, <laughs> rather than, like, backstab. He, but it kind of turns yeah. against you if you're uh, facing, you know, Grim Patron deck. And there's a Grim Patron, and it's like, oh, shoot. More oh, Grim yeah, <laughs> you do not want to use this against Grim Patrons. But yeah, don't worry, just play Thanos and then this. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, I wonder how it works. Do you think, like, if you play this and there's a green patron on the board, it creates another patron and then backstabs no. the patron? Oh, my. No, surely not, right? I think it happens all at once. That's the way wait, it works think, with everything. I think else, we would have right? to test it out oh, because man. the patron summons another patron the second it's not killed. <laughs> so as soon as the backstab happens, right? And, like, by the way, the animation is implied, it kind of does it. Mm. I would In love order. that so much, the flavor of all those drunken barmates just getting angrier and angrier <laughs> as this rogue tries to assassinate them. Oh, that would be beautiful. That would be crazy, though. <laughs> is it? I didn't expect to see this card get any play, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure how much play it is seeing, but I versed a deck today that was using Darkman Skulkers against mm-hmm. me, and every time he played one, uh, which of course was only twice, um, was... Very, very good. Yeah. Uh, he was able to kill my Sylvanas with it um, because of the way he had the board yeah. set up. It's hard to explain how right. that worked, but trust me, that's what happened. Um, <laughs> and then uh, later on, he, he was able to finish off a Ragnaros with it. So I don't know why two damage is somehow affecting my board this dramatic, uh, dramatically, uh, but that two damage well, is Backstab scary. has always been an incredibly good card to have in hand, like, just for utility purposes. Well, right? this is a five-mana oh, backstab in the situations that I'm talking about. I know that. About, I but... know that, totally. But I'm just saying, like, that utility can be super helpful. In addition, like, if anyone has a t- board of tokens or is playing a token kind of deck, it's just like, oh, they're all dead. Shoot. 
It's like it can do. A yeah, lot of- it's uh, it's certainly crazy the things you can do with Dark Knight and Skull Co. But it's there's still up to the Bayo whether it it deserves that's spot exactly or it. whether it's or whether yeah it we'll see. I actually haven't seen any Rogue decks playing it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like it sure so. doesn't seem good for oil from what I know of that deck. So. No, no, uh, it definitely would have put it that in there. This card would have to spawn some type of new, maybe tempo mm. rogue, which yeah. is obviously a very, very long, long, long time oh, ago. Yeah. That's what I um, figured. Like a like a very minion centric kind of rogue that is very fast sure. and tries to stay, That's kinda what they, stay on top today. of the tempo. Yeah, it's cool because this card it has immediate effect on the board, right? Kind of like uh, the SI yeah. agent. So you're you can play a, a minion and wipe their board. It's a very tempo-oriented card. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, that I it's not I kind of wish this card was a full cost and had the combo. <laughs> exactly what I was saying. Yes, it's interesting to me that, that would isn't. be much hmm, better. That's interesting. And I don't think I, that they would probably make thought of that, and they were like, no, this is too good. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, you mean at full cost, be, you think it was too good? Uh, mm. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to I judge, think. and obviously, if, if Blizzard has gone this route, then obviously it was too strong. Or maybe they were fearful of its mm-hmm. power, um, but I don't know. It was I, I don't know. Maybe that would be better. Maybe that would be more. I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to. I'm sorry. I'm rambling That's here, fine. but I, it's genuine. <laughs> it's curious. Uh, sorry, I'm curious to know uh, whether that would be overpowered or not. I don't think so because it's it's like undamaged, so it doesn't have synergy with stuff like shadow stuff. Yeah, um, it seems like. So I, I do wonder why the combo is there. Rather, uh, sorry, why the battle cry is there over the combo, especially because the I can think of almost combo. every other rogue minion that hits the board seems to have combo instead of battle cry. I'm trying to think of exceptions through my head, you know, you've got S one seven or S I seven. The only one that doesn't apply is Mistress of Disguise. Oh Master yeah, Disguise. Kidnappers also oh, true. combo. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, that is really interesting. Uh, another cool thing is just I think again in arena, this is a fantastic card in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, because I think as this way it can also it, it's also like a comeback mechanic, mm-hmm. right? It can be a good top deck. That's a good point. It could actually save you if you have lost the board to a bunch of small minions and you top this top deck this guy and you have nothing to combo it with, which might be better in a more minion centric kind of rogue. That's a really know. good point. Is that this card is pretty much never bad. Like if you're behind, it can really even the game up. If you're ahead, like you're still getting a four three, even if they have nothing on board and you don't have to worry too yep. much. And if you're in a tie, that's possibly the best situation because you can clean up after it uh, totally turns the board in your favor while still playing something. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually a really strong card from a limited standpoint because it's just like always useful. Um, For arena, I can see it being yeah, really good too. Totally. Um, but yeah, moving on to the final card, which I have no idea how it would be in Arena, though I really hope I get it one day. We have our legendary <laughs> for this wing, Cro-Magus. It's eight mana, legendary, obviously, because I just said that, and reads, whenever you draw a card, put another copy into your hand. Six attack, eight health, and is a dragon type. Any class can play it. What do you guys think of Cro-Magus? Any initial thoughts on this, Billy? I love this card. I am yet to properly play with this card. <laughs> uh, a total of six of my decks run this card, and I am yet oh to draw gosh. it. Um, <laughs> I think it's the one card so you can't I would, draw I would, <laughs> I would love to draw this card, but I'm, like I said, I'm yet to, and I would love to play with this card, but I am yet mm. to. I think that this is a really fun card. Yep. It's com- uh, its competitiveness is, is, is up in the air, like whether it's it's actually competitive or not um whether it is or not i still love this card and i think that it is a step in the right direction i want to see more fun cards like this that have uh potential competitive in a control v control match Um, this is insane because it allows you to draw more with and you go to like if you go to you know um fatigue you're you're just getting extra cards every turn that this thing is out like it's insane (laughs) <laughs> um, but I mean, imagine like a priest versus priest, where the first priest is right, right or a right. warrior versus warrior. Right. It's just insane. But yeah, yeah. True. I went with priest versus priest because I can usually stretch out. You're right. Longer than warrior. Yeah, for long but, mirrors like that, it can be very good. But those don't happen that Could often, be, uh, which is the problem. Like against aggro, they used I know. to. Yeah, they, they not anymore. To. They're right. Remember, like a, I think it was like a Mars and IDU that had like a close to a thirty minute match there with like priest. <laughs> Yeah, versus priest. It was oh, incredible. Man. I there, love there that. There was a match. time that priest and warrior was actually a common matchup. Mm. 
God, that was a fun time. <laughs> well, Billy, we just need I to, uh, every time we face Trisco Priest v. Warrior, both run Carmagus, see what happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I haven't seen this card in action, yep. actually, except for one person. Uh, I was watching Brian Kibler stream his priest, and yes. he was running Kermagus in it. And it just so happens that I guess the stars align from him. He was already winning the game, and he drew Kermagus, and he had two Northshires on his board. <laughs> so he plays Kermagus, doesn't get killed. On his next turn, he looks at his hand, and he has a Holy Nova, a Pyromancer, and a Circle of Healing. <laughs> and he, he just stares at that hand, and he just cannot contain himself. He's like, I, ju I just need to try this. So he plays the Pyromancer, <laughs> he plays uh, Circle, heals everything, draws a bunch of cards, and then plays Holy Nova. And basically just goes like football, double, quadruple Northshire, pretty much. Mm. And fills his hand up in this crazy, just, just hands just pouring everywhere. That's that is the dream. He has already lived the dream, and now we must all follow. That on is his like the maximum dream. Yeah, he drew so many cards. It's a little disappointing to me that they changed the wording in Ysera to where you can't double your dream cards with this. Um, that would have been so much fun because I believe they changed Ysera's wording so you don't draw dream cards anymore. Correct? Yeah, they did, but. I'm sure that they did it for a reason. Maybe this they probably reason. internally played Kermagus, and then they played Ysera, and the other person was like, "Okay, nurse. yeah, exactly." It's it's a bit yeah. ridiculous, especially now that like dragon decks have synergy together. So it's like, what's interesting <laughs> is if we do ever see a control hunter, which is I know probably a very long way away if that mm -hmm. ever happens. Um, tracking works with this. You're right. Tracking does work with True. it. That's amazing. Which is Ooh. interesting because you get drawing to double kill command. You no, well, not necessarily that, but you get to um, track, and then any card that comes up, you get yeah. two of, which could be helpful um, with clearing up a board if you need an Unleash the Hounds, uh, or you need a Hunter's Mark or something. I mean, just um, being able to get two of those cards in your hand is something that could be really nice for a potential control. Absolutely, I think just one thing that makes this so powerful again, especially with more mill decks out there, etc., is just like the fact that it's not just a card draw engine. That alone would be good, but it's a card duplicating engine. That's just so cool. And yeah. there are not very many ways to do that. I think Mage probably has the most ways to do that right now with Echo and Duplicate, literally called Duplicate. So Mage has some tools for that, but not a lot of other classes do. There's Thought Steal, um, but that's not even coming from your deck. So this is exciting stuff. Yeah, I think Kermagus is probably one of the most exciting dragons this set, other than Nefarian, because I really <laughs> like Nefarian. You still prefer Nefarian? Uh... A shame those two can't combo either. You can't, uh, can't double your Nefarian gain. That would be sweet. <laughs> it's a little disappointing that we just defeated ne uh, Nefarious and uh, still don't have uh, Nefar. Wait, is Nefarian related to Nefarious? I just realized the difference in that name, because I never did this raid. Are they... Nefarian and Nefarious, they're the same Is guy, Is Nefarian right? the name of Dragon Nefarious? I think so, right? I'm waiting for Billy if to I'm weigh in. Not that is silly. I, no, I'm not aware. I didn't do this. Okay, right cool. Um, but that is silly if, if, if that's the case. I'm assuming that is the it's case. It's gotta be. But I don't think he, they're different dudes. No, I'm looking at the card art for Nefarian and it looks exactly like Nefarious. I feel so yeah, underprepared now because I have no idea. Why isn't his name Lord Victor Nefarian or his dragon name? Because if he's like hiding his Lord Victor and like no one will know no, I'm Nefarian. because remember when when you're fighting him, <laughs> he transforms into Nefarious. That's, that's right. That's yeah. really weird. Like, oh wait, you mean he transforms uh, into Nefarian or Nefarian? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <This is> so <laughs> confusing. <laughs> oh my God, Blizzard names. Oh man. Please. But I believe that is that is what happens. Yeah, they are the same yeah. person, and then his uh, he just changes That's... name in different forms. It's Saruman know? and Saruman. By the Saruman way, can I say I love that lore. Oh, yeah. I love the lore of of drag like human sorry dragons having human yes. forms. I love that. That's so cool, and it also opens up potential cards in the future to be released, like Ysera's human. Ysera, yeah, uh, oh, and, that'd and be so like that. cool. <laughs> yes, I, I I love that lore. That's that's. 
That actually be, would be really cool. Like, if you had a dragon who had an ability to turn into a super dragon mid game, that wouldn't be a death rattle. Oh my god! Like a card that evolved mid game. Yeah, I still what yeah, I you made like certain conditions really or something. What I really want them to do oh, is magic fantastic. has a thing where cards can have abilities that if you spend mana, it triggers them. Basically, like more hero powers. If it could be like a dragon, you can play it and then pay five mana to like turn it into a super dragon by like clicking on an icon on the card. I would love abilities oh, like that. It could be. What if? Okay, what if? You could play like Ysera on human form on like turn four, and then if you pay like a little extra, you can turn her into Ysera itself. Right. If they didn't even want to create a new mechanic, they could throw a card in your hand that is called like Transform Ysera, and you could play that for five mana and do it. So like, oh, that is so yeah, cool. I think that would be a really cool new mechanic. But they just did a dragon expansion and didn't do that. So I'm guessing we'll be waiting a little while for them to come uh, back. I mean, that, yeah. but I can see that yeah. happening in the future. That could be a really cool mechanic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Or at least something along those mm-hmm. lines. For sure. I just love the idea of being able to put more mana into a card later if you decide to activate its ability. Yeah, kind of like build it up, kind of like you would do with like questing adventure yeah. or stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, that brings us to the end of our card reviews for this wing. There were definitely some great ones here. I'm curious real quick to go over like from this wing, what were everyone's favorite? What was everyone's favorite card? Um, I... Am a huge lover of Kernagus yeah. personally, but I feel like picking the legendary is rather boring. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with Fire God to Strike. Alrighty, what about you, Andres? Uh probably Flame Waker. That's a that's a great that's a great pick as well. I really like that. All, it. all I, the I, cards are so good. And I'm <laughs> probably going with Hungry Dragon, because I just love the whole yeah. summon of one cost and see what happens and yeah. Ah, that's cool. Have you guys seen the Golden Hunger Dragon? It looks I think bad. I had it. Yes. Like the fog I was lucky enough to uh, to thought steal from one of the the, the challenges this week. Uh, sorry, not the challenges. One of the uh, one of the bosses in the first wing. I was uh, I was lucky enough to use my golden oh. thought steal and steal a hungry dragon. I was nice. like, ah, oh, golden hungry. It's dragon. like spewing this red flame that looks really cool. I'm yeah. really hoping when you fight awesome. the final Nefarian, he just has an all gold deck. That would be really cool. Ah, uh, sweet. <laughs> All right, you know what else is sweet, Billy? What? Ending this episode. <laughs> Damn it, that's not this sweet. This is really familiar. <laughs> it's, like, it's bittersweet. Let's it's be honest, bittersweet. That's a perfect way to put it. <laughs> a bittersweet end. If you want to follow us on Twitter, we are Hearthaholics. You can also find us on YouTube under Hearthaholics, a Hearthstone podcast. That is the same on Facebook. Just search Hearthaholics, a Hearthstone podcast. You can also look at our page on whalesarewhales.com. To, which is the uh, podcasting network that we are currently being hosted on. Just type in whalesrwhales.com slash hearthaholics. Pretty darn simple. We also all regularly attend a game night for fellow Hearthstone podcast, The Angry Chicken. We run a little community game night for them. And you can find details on that for their subreddit. The uh, I guess it would be slash our angry chicken or TAC. How does it even work? TAC podcast? Yes. Okay, it'd be reddit.com slash so. r slash TAC podcast. I am very new to Reddit. That's pretty much the only subreddit I've used. So as you can see, I'm still <laughs> finding my way around it. You can also find us personally on Twitter. For me, I am at Lord Meldor. And you can find all of my other projects really on whalesorwhales.com. I run a bunch of different podcasts there. And just check out the homepage there and uh, click around and see what you think. Billy alluded to one earlier in the episode. Billy, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on twitter.com forward slash bbrawly, however you probably don't want to, because if you're watching this podcast, you are probably a hardstone player, and most recently I've mostly been tweeting about RuneScape, <laughs> which probably doesn't fall underneath hey, your interest. Hey, uh, expand um, your horizons, man. Just keep trying new things. Yeah, I also do tweet about Hearthstone, so if you do want to hear about Hearthstone stuff, uh, I, I do tweet about that, but occasionally you'll get a, you'll get a random RuneScape thing awesome it. Damn it. and i really look forward to seeing when we uh, get some more video content up on our channel that oh absolutely i'll be doing that uh next week or the week after whenever this wing whenever this uh expansion kind of finishes yes. out whenever this, the this week this week is the last week. week yes so this thursday will be the last one our yeah. last episode will be coming up a week from now and that will be you know the grand uh the grand grand closing of all this awesome uh blackrock stuff That's so right. Andres, where can people find you People can find me on Twitter at iPlayGames. You spell that I-P-L-A-I Games. You can also find me on my website, um, MassiveMusic.com. You spell that M-A-S-S-E-V-E, where I post all of my music, as well as in SoundCloud.com slash Massive. 
Uh, you can find um, all the music that we create with my company and including the intro track to this podcast. Awesome. And thank you again for, for doing that. That is such a rad song. Absolutely. It's possible that I played a good solid three hours of RuneScape while listening to that song. <laughs> Even when yesterday. you play other games, you just keep listening to that song. I, I cannot. It's actually, yes! a, it's actually probably a good grinding song. Can I get you in the mood? <laughs> yeah, dude. It, it really does. I'm really pretty enjoying that, to be honest. <laughs> I, I really can't fault you for that. I spent too much time listening to that song. If you want to spend too much time listening to our podcast, you can also check us out on iTunes and Spotify. Just look up Hearthaholics, a Hearthstone podcast. And if you like us, leave us feedback. Uh, you know, iTunes reviews are really big for any uh, any podcast, so leaving a five-star review is always much appreciated, and we'll, of course, read it on the show. So, yeah, that'll be it. Billy, I hope you've used this time to look up our flavor text of the week, because I totally forgot to remind you oh, of that again. Oh, no, I've got it. I've got it. Hold sure. on. One moment. We may have to fumble around sure, this. I'll explain to people to what get this to the page. is real quick, since it's still pretty new. Every week, we end reading out flavor text from a random card, and we trust you all not to Google it, but instead leave in the comments what card you think the text is from. Um, just, you know, it's just the loyalty off the top system. of your head. Uh, yeah, it's the, exactly. It is the honor system, the loyalty system, whatever you want to call it. But we trust you like you're our family. Um, do you have the quote yet, Billy? Awesome. I do. Uh, go ahead and uh, read it out. Left head and right head can never agree what to eat for dinner, so they always end up just eating ramen again. Let's go, hunt.